everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Hope you are all having an amazing day today. My name is Lex and welcome back to some more GTA 5 where today we're going to be checking out a pretty awesome set of cars. This is probably going to be quite a long video today and that is because today I want to show you some elegies. Now, the thing that has always been the problem with the elegy in GTA 5 is that it's supposed to be law friendly and you sort of tie it in with something in the real world. Well, this car wouldn't be in left hand drive because this would not have been sold in America and it would have been an import from Japan now that these can now be imported. That is to say the R32 Skyline can now be imported uh, into the US because of the 25 year rule or whatever they've got there. And so what that means is we're missing a right hand drive version of the Elegy. Now this is not it. This is actually a really cool drift missile style elegy that is made by Bob322. I just wanted to sort of give this a shout out and do a quick build at the start of this video just to check this thing out. It's basically just taking some of the parts from the original elegy retro and we, he's just made it into this really awesome little uh, drift missile style version. Uh, but again, this is left hand drive. This is not going to be the bulk of this video because in this video I want to check out the elegy RH5 which is to say the elegy import version. This would be the more accurate real life version uh, as if it was imported into Los Santos from Japan or from the law friendly version of Japan, whatever that might be. So that's what we're going to be checking out in this video. Any of you that are into imports and law friendly stuff are going to absolutely love this video. There's plenty of builds and stuff to get on with and some amazing cool new parts, liveries, all this exciting stuff including even pace cars and police cars. They are so damn cool. So before we get into all of this, there's going to be some comments on the screen. These are comments featured from the previous video. If you would like your comments featured, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll pick some at random and feature them at the start of the next video. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Twitter at figure8. Links for my Twitter are in the description below as always. So let's jump straight into this. All I want to do right now is if we actually just go to the parts, I will show you. The stuff that is on here is what you would expect from the LG Custom anyway. So all of these spoilers are going to be the same sort of stuff that is available. All of these you would get in the normal version on GTA 5. We also have all the different chassis stuff. What I want to do is just quickly make a quick build. I'm going to speed through this, although I do actually really like these wheels with the thick tires. But I think I might just start this for the fun of it. Or I could actually go for an off-road version. Seems and this looks like a bit of a nugget. So we'll sort of deviate from the whole drift missile thing. But I just want to make a quick build with this before we go on, so let's speed build this. Okay, so here we are with the quick build. There's all sorts of stuff. There's also all the dashboard and everything that can be changed with this one. So pretty close to the original Elegy, just that you can't really change the front and rear bumpers because they're all sort of damaged. And I've gone for the sort of drift missile style livery and I've gone for this nice worn yellow and matte black for the secondary. Uh, also got all this stuff going on. And I've gone for these off-road wheels, which I think is actually going to go against the style of this car. But I'm just curious to see how this would look like if it was some sort of like lifted rally car for some reason. So let's just quickly jump out this camera road and go to V-Stancer. And let me just sort of, I don't know, I'll make the wheels slightly bigger and slightly wider as usual. Then we'll just go ahead to visual lowering and knock that up a little bit and just change the uh, wheel track width front and rear just so it sticks out just a little bit. And there we are, just a, a fun off-roader style elegy that's supposed to be a drift nugget but is actually now just some sort of off-roader thing. In fact, what we could do to finish to add some uh, extra detail to it as well is if we just go down to paints, I can get the dirt level and I can crank that all the way up just to match with all of the uh, extra stuff that's going on in the livery but just to add some dirt to the wheels and stuff as well. How about that? That is one hell of a build straight away. So I guess now it's time to check out the actual LG RH5 import version. Let's not stall any longer. Let's just go down to this car park right here and check them out. Okay, so here we are on the top. I'm just going to spawn in a couple of different elegies. We're going to spawn in the standard one in GTA, keep this one in, and also we're going to spawn in the import just so we can compare them and see what's different. Okay, so here we are with these three. We have the Drift Missile, which is, of course, just based on the standard elegy. We then have the standard elegy, as you can see, left-hand drive. 
and then we have the new LG RH5 import as it should be from Japan in this beautiful purple that it spawned in as well. Really nice. Also definitely got the more standard looking spoiler as well compared to this one which has the little lip thing going on. And definitely this one has all sort of like mismatched paint whereas this is just nice, clean, just as if you've just bought it from the import garage from Japan. Absolutely beautiful. So on the front they seem to be pretty similar. I mean actually almost identical to each other. So looking at these two cars on the surface level they are pretty much identical. They're using the same model as the base thing. As you can see everything's sort of the same apart from the fact that this one has different wheels because this is supposed to be some already sort of half tuned version. It also has the mismatched paint as standard when you spawn this in for some reason. Uh, whereas this one has all the nice gleaming paint and of course, it's sort of like a throwback to the original wheels that you would have had on this from Japan. So this is like a really expensive, probably, version. Also, I'm noticing that this has the um, orange side indicator things here, whereas this one has clears. So slightly different on that level. But other than that, in stock form, they're pretty close. In fact, they're actually identical. On the interior, the main difference is going to be the fact that this is right-hand drive. So we have all this on the right. There's our dials. Is our dashboard right here and then this one is basically just that but mirrored well actually you would say that this is just that but mirrored of course seems in this was actually the one that came first so here's the left hand drive version that obviously wouldn't exist and that's why there's been a bit of a, a hole in the law you should say um, this sort of was made by Rockstar on the assumption that this car was always sort of sold in in America or in the GTA universe in this country which of course in real life that wasn't really the case so let's just go ahead and have a look at some parts there's also a bunch of pre-built ones what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do one build looking for all the parts then we'll check out all of the pre-builts then we'll do a couple of speed builds as well because there's also so many different versions to get through I've been stalling it when really we don't need to there's a lot to get on with this is gonna be a really long video so let's just go to the camera mode, make this look nice and pretty right there. Let's just go to vehicle options, menus, customs, and let's start off with wheels because actually in stock form, there are a bunch of stock style wheels. If we just go to sport, stock rims, and we go down here, we should have starting from the uh, Fuji LM right here. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. So we have this, then we have the LMGT, which is sort of like a non-split rim version of that one. Can I just say that this bit that's in the middle, I feel like that should be set deeper into the wheel. Is that really a thing that would stick out that much? It seems a bit wrong that that sticks out so much, but at least these wheels are gorgeous. Then we have the Suzuka ones. Again, absolutely beautiful looking, really old school style. Absolutely love these. Then we have the Tsukuba ones, nice multi-spoke one. Then we have the Elegy OEM. Then we have the Nakazato, Nakazato, which is sort of like a slightly smaller one that also has the split rim version. Then we have the Animo GT. This is supposed to be based on Nismo wheels. Then we have the GT2. Then we have the GT2 S to finish. So there's all the different sort of stock Skyline, or I should say LG wheels for this build. I might actually for this one, what should I go with? Should I just go with like the Nakazato because it's got like the split rim thing? Looks quite nice. Maybe go for one of the GTs. GT2 looks pretty nice. Or maybe this. Actually, I am a big fan of this sort of wheel, so I'm going to go for the LMGT. So moving on to the spoiler, there are 29 options. Some of these might be similar to the ones that are already uh, on the stock one. I can't remember what's what, so we'll just have to go through this anyway. So we have the stock. Then we have the short lip with the extended lip, the bolt-on ducktail, the drag spoiler. Yeah, I do recognize some of these from the other builds. We have the stock car spoiler. We have the carbon flap spoiler, the low spoiler, the low carbon spoiler, the classic RS wing, the carbon classic RS wing, the tuna wing, the carbon wing type 2, the extreme downforce BGW, the muscle killer wing, the drift wing, the OEM spoiler, black lip, slightly different, it's actually got some nice carbon on it as well, I actually really like the look of that one. Uh, then we have the small spoiler, quite nice. Again, that is actually just that spoiler right there. Then we have the OEM spoiler that's actually just uh, reference to the stock one again. Then we have remove spoiler to get rid of that completely. The aluminium drag wing, the CF drag wing, the GTK drag wing. Okay. I think GTK is the law friendly version of HKS. Wow. Okay, that is a huge drag wing. Then we have Benny's Originals painted. Good God. <laughs> 
Then we have the original's carbon fiber. Then we have the Wangang wing. Oh, that's nice. I like that one. Then we have the alien wing. That's very sort of like 90s, early 2000s tuna look. Then we have the Zero Yon wing, which is actually quite nice. Quite, uh, oh, that's quite understated. I quite like the look of that one. And then we have the Krieger wing. Good God. Good God, that is, that almost looks like a, a crown, if you look at it from the back. <laughs> that is mad. I think for this one, I actually really like the look of the Zero Yon wing. So let's go for that. Then for the front bumper, we have 26 options. We have the stock, we have the painted. I'll tell you what, shall I actually, I really like this paint color, but shall I go for a lighter color so you can see it a bit better? There we go. I'll have that in red just so you can see it slightly more because it was a nice color, but it was a little dark. So we have the painted extended spoiler. We have the black extended. We have the extended front diffuser. We have the splitter with the canards. We have the tow hook version. We have the Bayshore sticker version. Bayshore sticker version two. That's basically just one with the black lip. Then we have the black bumper lip without the Bayshore sticker. We have the Rally Lights version. We have the Drag Covered Intakes version. We have the GTK Drag Bumper, which is another sort of covered one, but all uh, color coded and painted. Then we have the RR Lip, the IR Lip with the Bayshore sticker. The Benny's Original Painted. Oh my God, there's so many versions. We have the Carbon Fiber Bottom version. We have the GA Styling. Again, that looks kind of uh, drifty. Then we have the Alien Bumper. Again, that is very... Actually, is that not an ode to... Oh, that looks like it's from San Andreas. Yeah, wouldn't that be the Elegy? Was it called the Elegy in San Andreas? There was definitely a Skyline-ish car in San Andreas. Was that not... the? Uh, was that not the bumper that they used? It looks really familiar. But again, it's a hark back to sort of like... Uh, probably early 2000s tuna era. Then we also have that with the bumper lip. Then we have the Krieger half bumper, which actually I really like. Again, it's a really nice understated bumper that actually really goes well with the uh, spoiler. Seems and they're both Kriegers. Then we have Revolt SA. Oh, dear God. Okay. Then we have Revolt SA with some lights in there. Then we have the Animo bumper with the Bayshore sticker. Then we have another version. Then we have the black lip without the sticker. And then we have the Animo bumper painted lip. I'm going to go for the Krieger half bumper as I actually really like the look of that for some reason. It just looks like some sort of, like, it's already been body kitted in Japan. A Japanese guy's owned it. He's tuned it up with some cool sort of nice and tasteful aftermarket parts. And, yeah, I like that. I'm going to go for that. Then on the rear bumper, let's just get around here. In fact, let's turn this around so we can see this better. There we go. We'll do it here. So we have the rear bumper stock. Then we have the carbon track diffuser. Woof. Look at that. Then we have the alien garage diffuser. Then we have the X-Flow Diffuser. That's only slightly different. It's got a different sticker on the side. Then we have the Bayshore Sticker version. We have the GTK Diffuser, which is pretty full on. I've got to say, that's mad looking. Then we have the Benny's Original Painted. Then we have Benny's Original Carbon Fiber on the side there, as you can see. Then we have the GA Styling Single. Again, that's a Drift Star bumper. We've also got the double one, which also blocks out the rear reverse lights and adds a double exhaust. Then we have the Alien Bumper, again, pretty sort of tunery, also diffuser look, but actually quite ugly looking. Then we have the Carbon Fiber version, then we have that one with the lip, then we have the Revolt SA Half Bumper, that, that, that doesn't look too bad. We also have that one with the fins on it, that's interesting, and that's that one all done. So there is actually no rear Krieger Bumper, so I guess actually I might just go with this Revolt SA Half Bumper. How does this compare to the stock? Ah, it's just slightly longer. Yeah, I think that'll work. I think that'll work as sort of just a nice add-on for this kit. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to go for that. Then for the skirts, I guess we should probably move it again out into the sun. There we go. So the skirts, we have the stock. We have the side skirt extensions. We have the carbon side skirt extensions. We have the drift skirts. We have the hold skirt, which is actually just the drift skirt in black, I think. Yeah, they seem to be pretty much identical. Then we have the Benny's Original Painted, just this little bit on the back. Then we have the Carbon Fiber version. Then we have the GA Styling. Again, that's another sort of drift style one, I'd say. Then we have the Alien Skirts with the scoop on the side. Then we have that one with the lip. Then we have the Revolt SA Skirts, which I think sort of go with the rest of the kit, but might be a little bit too much. Then we have the Animo Skirts, which has this nice little bit at the bottom there at the back. And then we also have one with mud flaps, which is actually just based on the stock skirts with mud flaps. Hmm. 
interesting. Well, I'm not going to go with the mud flaps. The Animo skirts are quite nice, but it doesn't really flow with the rear bumper. I might just go with the Revolt again, because it does sort of match with that front bumper, but... Yeah, I would have liked it to have been a little bit smoother. Maybe just the extensions would have been all right. Yeah, let's just go for the simple side skirt extensions. Let's do that. Then onto the exhausts, we have the stock. We have the chrome tip, which looks very nice on one side. Always a big fan of that. We have the big bore exhaust. Again, huge fan. Race exhaust, titanium exhaust. Again, you know what I feel about the titanium textures. Not really a fan. Then we have the twin chrome. Ooh, that's nice. Twin titanium, twin titanium tuner. Double side exhaust. Aha. Okay, is that both sides? No, nope, just on the one side right there. And then we have that one which goes there, which also has a nice heat guard as well, which doesn't actually really match with the extended skirts, but oh well. But I don't like that it gets rid of the holes on the back, but I don't mind the big board taking just one side and leaving that one open. So I might actually, just for the sake of this being a cool sort of imported Japanese car, going by the styles of Japanese import cars that I've seen, and how they just tune it in Japan, I'm just going to go for a single big bore on one side. Also, it's sort of like my car in real life, which I'm always a fan of. Then, the chassis, we have the stock. Let's go into here so we can see. These are just going to be basically the same, I think, for the most part, compared to the original LG. There's all the different cage options. We also have that on the roll cage. And then we also have the touring car roll cage, which is, I believe, going to be slightly different. Ooh, I didn't notice these HKS things. Are these based on... Okay, they're not based on anything from here, but I didn't notice them before, but they look awesome. I absolutely love that sort of like 90s style graphics thing. I'm just a huge fan of that. That's awesome. So for this one, as it's an import and as I wanted to make this sort of like, you know, pretty basic and like a street build, I'm just going to go for the street half cage. But even that's probably a bit too far, but we'll keep it with that. So onto the grills, we have the stock grill. We have the secondary grill surround. We have the black grill surround. We have the OEM grill. Oh, now that's a bit more like the real life one. That's cool. Although the LG badge is sort of lost behind there. Then we have the grill cover version. Or we have the grill eyelids. Okay, I'm just going to go for the OEM grill. As that's cool. Then onto the hood here, we have a lot of options. 14. We have the stock. We have the duct. We have the vented. We have the double vented. We have the performance hood. We should probably look from this side to see it better. We have the raised extreme hood. We have the carbon hood, carbon duct, carbon vented, carbon double vented, carbon performance, carbon extreme, OEM base bonnet. How's that comparing? Ooh. Oh, 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 right. I see, because obviously the GTR was the one that sort of had that sort of thing, but didn't the GTS sort of have that flowing down, at least on the R32? Because uh, of course this is sort of like a R32, R33 hybrid. Oh, okay. So that would make it definitely look more like a GTS than a GTR. But that is interesting. I like that. But I, not for this build in particular, but I do like that that's there. Then we have the, good God, the Revolt SA vented to finish. So I think for this one, we'll go for sort of like, um, just sort of a generically modified style I, I mean these are gonna be a bit too much just the, like a, a ducted hood just there it's probably fine we'll go for that then on the fenders here we have the stock we have the single vent front fenders then we have the twin vent we have the wide angular rear fenders which look oh you can see slightly different oh yeah that's definitely a bit wider there then we have the primary color bolt on arches or the carbon fiber ones i'm gonna keep that stock for this build i think maybe we'll go for a different front wing that might be a bit too much. Uh, do you know what? No, we'll go for that single front vent. Then we have, again, on the fenders, we have the debadged grill. Ah, so that's how you get rid of that badge behind the grill. That looks def that looks a lot better. Then we have removed grill mesh completely, which actually I think is going to work with this grill. Then we have removed bumper mesh as well, and removed grill and bumper mesh. Uh, I'm going to do that because I like the idea of having that all nice and visible. Uh, that's very tunery as well, so we'll go for that. Then on the roof, we have roof spoiler on the back. Then we have carbon roof spoiler. We have the OEM antennas, antenna number two, or the touring car antenna. I think I'm going to go for the OEM antenna number two. Then it's just a case of engine, brakes, transmission, uh, suspension, which goes lowered, street, sport, and competition. So there's there's the drop. That's, that's a 
pretty fair amount of drop. Then we have uh, a few extras as well. We also have extra two. I think these might be on the interior. Let's just check. Ah, yes, that might have been. Ah, it was. So extra two was these really cool HKS. Are these HKS graphics? I think they are. Oh, well, HKS inspired floor mats. Then we also have extra one. God, we're going to have to find... Oh, it's a for sale sign. Nice. Okay, well, of course, uh, with all the garages probably buying all these in, uh, to make all the money on them for the new 25 year rule of importing these then obviously naturally they're gonna have a for sale sign on a lot of these So that's cool that that's there. Then we have extra three. Where's this one? Ah, extra three is another floor mat as well There's that one right there. Then we have extra four which are these uh, tins of drink right there Are these supposed to be no? Okay, I thought they were gonna be some sort of like uh, Japanese tinned coffee. Oh, well, they are tinned coffee. I guess just not it says LC, so presumably that's English. In fact, no. Japanese. They're actually supposed to be actual Japanese tin coffee. Okay. With these uh, garage alien styling uh, aftermarket cup holders as well. Well, that's absolutely lovely. I believe there's also going to be some stuff in Benny's Low Rider mod section. Holy moly. This thing is highly modifiable. Okay. Plate holder. We could remove plates on the rear. We could also have it remove plate on the front, which actually um, we don't need to worry about because we have the aftermarket bumper anyway. Then we have the left mounted front plate right there, which actually glitches in on this one. And then we have the right mounted, which glitches in as well. Uh, I'm just going to go for just the stock. Um, uh, just the stock. Just stock as it is. Vanity plate. We can have this with the elegy plate right there. Oh, nice. The Nakazato one. Ah, that's basically just a Japanese plate. We have the RH5 plate. And then we have Shinigami, so we just have a couple of different Japanese-style plates right there. Uh, well, of course, if this was like a, a fresh import and this was just being driven, in fact, would this be allowed on the roads in America with the Japanese plates? You would on the front. Uh, it's interesting that we can't have, like, the vanity plate on the front but not the rear. Uh, but actually, I think for this case, I'm going to make this as if it was, you know, it's running, it's legal on the U.S. roads. I'm going to have this U.S. registered. Then the trim, we have the sun strip right there then we have the front and rear sun strips which is slightly different to what you get in the elegy because normally the stock one just has it on the front and then we also have the bay shore sticker right there on the window and uh seems in that sort of like a style i think a lot of people might go for i'm actually going to keep that bay shore sticker i don't know why it's just i don't know it's just a tunery thing i guess to have stickers in windows then we have on the dashboard We've got the stock, we've got the semi-stripped interior. Again, this is all still right-hand drive and working. I should probably definitely get rid of those cup holders as well. So looking through these, the race dash and stripped interior has all this stuff down here. But then we have the touring car chassis, which gets rid of a lot of those extra things and just sort of strips it out even more. And then we also have the street interior, which just sort of has like no carpets, but still has the original dash. So I might actually just go for the non-carpeted version without the rear seats as well. Yeah, let's just go for that. The street interior one. That's pretty cool. So then we also have the additional dials. We're going to have the pod mounted taco, the taco and glove box gauges. Pretty cool. I do like the look of that. The taco and the dash gauges and the race display. Ooh. I think just a simple pod mounted taco. Nice cheap parts. On the seats, we have the original sports seats. I think that might actually be the winner because I think that seems to be more accurate. Actually, no. I think actually bucket seats are quite common, you would see on uh, modified imported cars from Japan. So maybe we'll go for one of these. Or, or we could just remove... Ah, there we go. Let's remove passenger seat and have the race seat. Perfect. Perfect. Then the steering wheels. Not much choice, but you don't want all this extra stuff. We've got the Apex Basic. We have the Sprint Basic. Then we have the Sprint Lightweight and the Sprint Featherweight. Uh, let's go for the Sprint Lightweight. There we go. On the engine block, we haven't actually opened up the boot and the bonnet yet. Is there anything else we could do on the outside whilst we're here? Uh, strut brace, arch covers. All oh, these are going to be headlight ducts and stuff. Okay, let's do the outside first. So we have the painted headlight duct. Ooh, okay. Carbon version, painted duct and painted light. Carbon duct and plated light, which again, it's just a carbon plate right there. Oh, that does look cool. Then we have the twin painted headlight ducts, twin carbon headlight ducts, the headlight covers, the blue headlight tint, green headlight tint, red headlight tint, yellow headlight tint. Okay. Oh, oh then we have the full cover, which also gets rid of the indicators as well. Then we have the Revolt SA headlights, if you're into that. We have the alien version again, if you're into that. 
and then we have the taped versions. I think I like it stock, to be honest. If I was going to go for this build, which I, I want this to be like a fresh import as if it's been made by some guy that's just run it into the ground on cheap parts and some extra stuff, like some aftermarket stuff uh, from Japan. I, I think that they probably wouldn't go for anything too crazy with the lights, so we'll keep that stock. Then on the aerials, this is actually not aerials, this is just a bunch of catches. We have the uh, hood lip on the front there, as you can see. Then we have the carbon version. Then we have some chrome hood catches. Then we have some angled ones. Then we have some straight ones. Then we have the lip, and basically we just seem to have some different combinations of all of these. I think we'll go with the uh, nice little lip there, and we'll go for the nice cheap uh, pinned style hood catches. Then on the trim, we have some vents for the rear. We have the roof vent uh, and in carbon. I'm not going to go for that. Then we have the tank. This is going to be the uh, intercooler. So we have the intercooler with twin fans. We have the monster intercooler. Monster intercooler with water sprayer. We have the logo one, which you can't really see behind the plate there. Then we have the logo monster intercooler. In fact, should I... Um, why has that got the plate on the front now? I want to get rid of that plate. Let's just go remove front plate. That's better. Then we have the Anis Retro Intercooler. Oh, that's nice. Then we have the Monster One, the Animo, the GTK, and the Wave. I like the idea of having a nice GTK one on there. Yeah, that's cool. Then on the doors, we have black wind deflectors. They're pretty nice. They're pretty JDM. Then we have loads of liveries. 51 liveries, or actually just 50, because the first one's stock. Wow. Okay, so we have, to start with, the RH5 in white. Then we have that one in black. We have the Animo Artoon Star one, or which is, of course, based on Nismo. Then we have that one in black and white variants with some different badges and stickers on the side. Then we have the GTK white. Oh, look at this. We have that one in gray, that one in black. We have the Yours custom, which is, of course, supposed to be like the Mines custom. I like that. We have the Animo Street Rider. Oh, my God. These are just absolutely mad. We have the Takashi Naz Nakazato. Um, I don't know. Some of these are going to be referenced to things that I don't know, by the way, because I don't know everything about Japanese tuning and probably some sort of maybe anime or something uh, that these things end up coming from, so I don't know. We have the Marabella Special, or the Marabella Special, rather, uh, with just a couple of little stickers there and also that sticker down on the front, which probably would look different if we had some different bumpers on here. Then we have the Not Tonight Pizza Boy, of course, this is an ode to the one from Fast and the Furious. Is, was this not on this elegy? I can't remember what is what. Maybe that is new. Huh. Well, yeah. There we go. There's a nice Fast and the Furious reference one. Then we have the Benny's Originals sticker down the bottom there. We have the Team NK instead of NK. Then we have Team Anis Air Hurler. Again, interesting. And definitely another racing livery. There's plenty of those to go around. We have Team Fuji Racing. We have Team GTK. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is, of course, supposed to be like the HKS liveries. Oh, we can make the HKS drag one. And I did actually say that there are a bunch of pre-built, so I'm sure the GTK drag car is going to be in those pre built So we'll check those out in a minute. Then we have the LTD. Then we have the Eris, of course, on the Eris running shoes with the nice uh, Union flag right there. Then we have the Kronos. Then we have Cronus number five. Oh, I, I like the color scheme of that one. That's quite nice. Then we have the post op one. Uh, also, is that is that an American company? That looks like uh, Deutsche Post. No, actually, my brain's probably fizzled. Then we have Team Lombank. Ah, okay. Oh, what is that supposed to be based on? Is that Mobile? Is that? I think that might be a take on the Mobile logo, but I could be wrong. Then we have the Yeti Clothing. There are so many of these. We're only halfway through. Then we have Yeti Clothing number 29. We have Team Anis. We have Team Access. We have Team Mindmacked. Oh, God. There's, there's even stuff on the back that we're missing as well. This is so much to check out with these liveries. We have Brand 69 Cuban Cigars. Interesting. We have the Anis Motorsports one as well with a bunch of Katakana on the side that I'm not going to be able to tell. And it's... Anisu Motorsports. Oh, okay. Anisu Motorsports. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Wow. It's been a long time since I've studied Japanese. I'm starting to forget it all. Then we have the Team Fukaru, Team Amigas, 
Team Amiga stunt number 47. Ooh, that is Repsol. Is that supposed to be based on? I think that's Repsol. Then we have the Zenshin Motorsport. Then we have the Team Terror Oil, supposed to be like Pennzoil. Then we have the Cool Hand Motorsport one, which is supposed to be like Castrol. Then we have the Elegy Group A test car. We had the Pegasus Racing. That's quite an interesting one. Nice, nice, nice. I think that one actually... Uh, normally some of these have really weird colours that you can never match, but this one seems like it's mostly white and black. I actually quite like that with the red. I think that looks really nice. Then we have the Team Fukaru Kansai. Again, another Japanese-style racing one. We have Team HFS. Hyperfunk Suspension. Not sure what that's supposed to be based on in real life. I'm sure you guys can tell me. Then we have the Sprunk Extreme Drift spec, which again, ah, it's supposed to be like Monster. Sprunk Extreme, of course. That's awesome. I, I, I love this little friendly stuff. It's amazing. And uh, a rather rude word on the back there. Then we have Ripperoo Drift spec. Ah, oh, Ripperoo. It's supposed to be like Red Bull. That's cool. I like that as well. Then we have the Elegy Wasabi. This is like a, oh, it's an Itasha style one. Interesting. If you want to go it's a show with this, you can as well. Uh, I think we actually could have done with the stock elegy as well, wasn't there? There was a, a sort of it's a style one. Am I even going to try to attempt to read this? Put in something so. Roboto. 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 Princess Roboto. Uh, I, I, I give up. <laughs> Maybe it's Princess Robot something. Then we have the Anis Motorsports Australia version. Then we have the Bayshore Wave special version. Uh, so this would actually also match the uh, writing that we got there, Bayshore Racing Team. Then we have Cherry Popper Japan, so the Japanese version of Cherry Popper, which is pretty cool. Cherry Popper. Then we have Limitless JGTC. Ooh, I like the look of that one as well. That's nice. I like that. Then we have Limitless Street Drag. Ooh, I like that as well. That's quite simple and, and nice. Then we have the Tension, Motorsports, and then finally, GA Styling. Wow, okay, so it seems in this is supposed to be some sort of like freshly imported car. I don't think that it would have come with all the liveries and stuff, so I'm going to keep this one stock, but we will go through and look at all the pre-builds in a minute. And uh, let's just have a quick check and change all the uh, engine stuff as well whilst we're here. So here we are with the uh, boot and the bonnet open. Here's the boot. Oh, it's all stripped out as well. Ah. So if we just go to this. Oh, look at that. It has this. Oh, okay. So here we have that with the petrol tank. Then we have that one. Ah, neat. And then we also have this one that's all stripped out. That is cool. I like that that's also continued onto the boot. Really nice. So there is the nice stripped out boot. And then we have this nice 3D engine in the front. How does this compare to the standard Elegy? Let's have a quick look. Okay, so here we are. So actually very close to each other. Very close to each other. It's just that this one has, um, well, just says RH8 on there with Anis. And this one says RH5. That's pretty much the only difference, I think, between them. So on the engine block, we have the stock. We have the primary color valve covers. Ooh, lovely, lovely. Then we have the polished valve covers. Then we have the black valve covers. The texture seems to have gone a little wrong on these ones, as you might notice, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, I might actually just keep that stock just for the texture. Mind you, I do like the look of the primary color things, all the extras, so let's go for that. Then on the air filters, we have the stock. We have the, oh, this is not actually air filters. It's cam belt covers and pulleys and stuff. So we have the red cover. We have the polished cover. We have the black cover. Then we have the exposed pulleys in different colors. I want to go... I always go for purple, but I think to match, we'll just go for red for this one. Then on the fittings, we have the triangulated strut brace. That's it. And I think that is everything done under the bonnet. And that means that this build is finally done. Wow. That took a long time. That took a really long time. And there we are with our finished build that I'm actually going to keep in red. And I'm not really going to stance it or anything. I think that looks absolutely perfect as it is. So now, what I want to do is jump out. I want to go to menus mod. Let's go to vehicle spawner. Save vehicles. I have a huge bunch of these pre-built ones right here for us to check out to get some better ideas of different full builds once you combine all the parts. So we have this one. This is the RH5 with factory decals from 1989. Very nice. Also got the RH5. This is basically as it would be 
in the showroom. Then we have the 1989 OEM. This is basically without all the decals and the showroom plates and all that sort of stuff as it would have been as it was sold. Then we have the 1990 Animo edition, which again, oh, look at that really nice paint color. Uh, again, this looks like some sort of showroom version. This is, of course, supposed to be the Nismo version. So it's got different bumpers, as you can see on the front there, as well as some also uh, different side skirts and stuff. This is basically the full Animo kit. Then we have the 1991 V-Spec with the different wheels as well. Oh, that is nice. Again, different grill and all that sort of stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Like that one a lot. Then we have the Animo Custom. We're going to have to speed through these to get faster since my other cars have actually despawned themselves now. So we have the Animo Custom. Then we have the Animo Street Rider. Oh, okay, that's even got neons. That's supposed to be all sort of tunery style. There we go. That's gross. <laughs> then we have the Bayshore Special. Auto Exotic Body Shop. This is supposed... I, I guess this would be like an American style one where they've just imported it and they've made their own nice build for it. Then we also have special number two, just another build of theirs. Nice different, oh, I like the color of that. That is cool. Then we have number three. Again, there are so many more details if you look for the, the interiors and stuff. These all have their own details, but I have spent so much time already that I'm going to have to try and just skip through these. Then we have the Benny's original version, again, with all this spoiler and stuff. And actually different color rear light clusters. I didn't realize, is that on the secondary? I guess that must be. No. Okay, why is that... That must be a livery thing. Okay, you can see it is a livery thing. Once we go back to the Benny's Originals one, it just has the black rear lights. Interesting. Okay. So then moving on, we have the Group A edition. This is supposed to be some sort of race car style one. Really nice Group A. Is Group A racing? This is where I just show my ignorance to racing. I really just was never into motorsports as a kid. And yeah, I apologize. GTK Custom. Okay. Oh, very nice. Really like the color of that one as well. That's really nice. That's actually probably one of my favorite ones. Then we have the JTCC Anis test car. And by the way, I still haven't shown you the police version and the pace car version. I was saving those till last. It's just this video is just so long. Yes, I am still showing those. So then we have this one. Then we have the Mindmacht version. Oh, look at that. Yes. Okay, this is, these are so cool. These are, of course, all based on real-life versions. Okay, this is... Why did I jump? I think I was so excited I want to drive it, and I took it straight off a jump. Don't know why. So then we have the JTC Pegasus Racing one. These are just going to be all the different style racing ones. We have the Anis star one. We have the Cool Hand as well, the Castrol star. Ooh, look at that. These are so cool, these builds. I love when mods come with these, like, huge loads of builds that you can just spawn in through menus mod so you can see... How, they, how the mod maker intended for them to look with all these different builds. So we have the Team Eris. We have the GTK. Oh, look at that. Now I understand where the tinted lights come in. I see it now. We have the HFS again with those yellow tinted front lights as well. I like the look of this and the GTK. Then we have the Inke version. Then we have the Kansai version. Oh my god. We have the Kronos version, we have the Team LTD version, we have the post-op version. Again, with all these really nice, awesome, more stripped out racing wheels and all this sort of stuff. Then we have the Nakazato right there. Oh, yes, that's supposed to be one that's actually in Japan with these Japanese plates as well. We have the Rally version, which actually doesn't have the Rally front lights. It's just uh, a slightly Rally version. Then we have the Revolt SA Drag version. Oh, yeah, I like that one. That's cool. Then we have the Shinigami one. Again, that's another sort of Japanese one as if it was in Japan with the Japanese plates. And then we have to finish yours custom, which actually I think might be my favorite. That is, I'm just a huge fan of the mines look with their livery. So to have the yours version, that is cool. I like that a lot. Right, so now that we've finished with all of these, let's check out the other versions of the RH5, the Japanese police and the pace car. So I was gonna say the best till last, but I really just have to show this right now. Get a load of this. This is the proper Grand Touring livery styled Elegy pace car. It's got Grand Touring. It's supposed to be like Gran Turismo. We've also got the, what I really love, the Degenatron 2, all with the uh, PlayStation 2 style fonts. This is supposed to be exactly like the Gran Turismo style cars in that livery. This thing is totally awesome. I absolutely love this. And of course, it does have all the sort of pace car stuff 
with the flashing lights, uh, which in this case, it does actually act like a police car. It doesn't make police sirens, but it does make people move out of your way. As you can see, as I drive with this, it does actually make people pull over and stop. I guess you can actually see the side. There you go. Actually pull in just a little bit. So it works like a police car, but it's supposed to be like a pace car. And of course, it's even got the plate as well to match. So on the customs of this, there's actually nothing you can really do. This is just it in its stock form. There's no extras or anything like that. It's, it's made purely just for this pace car. And that's it. And then to finish, we have this. The TMPD Elegy RH5. This is supposed to be like the Tokyo Police. I don't know if this is meant to be some sort of like law friendly style version of Japan with a different name. I don't know what any of this means, but we have this awesome Japanese police car with all these little bits on the uh, on the bonnet here, which I don't know what they're for. Wind deflectors or something, perhaps. Not sure. Got all the lights going on in the front. Also got the uh, Japanese police style badge. There you go. There's the badge and the red lights on top. And again, I don't think this has any tuning options because this is supposed to be just like a pace car. Yeah, it's pretty much stock as it is. Although there are a couple of different livery versions. I'm going to have to check this pace car now just in case I got that wrong. But we have livery one. We have livery two. Just a couple of different ones. There's some police badging and writing on it. I like the look of livery two. That is nice. I'm going to go for that. And of course, I can turn the lights on. Look at that. Now, this doesn't have police sirens for some reason. Maybe I've broken it. Uh, but this is, of course, silent. But in Japan, I think police cars just have the lights just going. So I guess that seems right. Sadly, we can't, you know, enable the siren. We still just get the horn. But I think in Japan, they do just sort of have these police cars with the lights on just all the time. So I think that works. That sort of makes sense. You can just sort of park it on. It just has the lights, no sirens extra, just like they have it in Japan. But I just want to quickly check out this on the back as well. Also noticing that these lights are flashing as well. Do the police ones do that? It doesn't seem like they do. No, these rear lights do not flash. We just have the lights on the front and the lights on the top. Whereas the pace car ones has the blue lights flashing. It has the rear flashing lights on the um, reverse lights and also flashing lights on the indicator parts there as well. That is damn cool. And of course, should mention that this pace car has the clearer lights, not the orange ones. Right, and just to check, there is actually no liveries with this one. That is it as it is. And that is the car in full. Now, I said I was going to do a couple of speed builds. I'm not going to walk you through them. I'm just going to build them. You're going to see me build them in speed. And in fact, I'm even going to include all the v and stuff in speed, which normally I sort of like separate. I'm going to do four builds and then we'll have a look at their finished product. So let's just park this up here and uh, do a couple of speed builds. Probably one stance. We've already done an off-road one. We'll see how we go. Let's just, let's just see. Okay, and here we are finally done with this build. I spent a lot of time on this. I wanted to go for a proper GTK drag style build. So I've gone for the drag spoiler. I've gone for the GTK gear. I've gone for the Fuji wheels as well, which I've also made a little bit wider and brought them further out to the arches using V Stancer. And I've just gone for the black paint as well, which I think goes with this livery really nicely. I've gone for the painted with scoop on the uh, front lights. I've also gone for the carbon guard. Could have gone for a painted one, but I just went for carbon. Then we've got all like sort of all the clogged up things for drag, which I think probably would have been better without the visible uh, intercooler, but I wasn't too sure. So I just went for the one that said GTK on it because I thought it looked cool. Uh, whether that makes it better at drag racing, I don't know. Also gone for the um, proper drag racing style uh, grill that's been all plugged up as well. And then on the interior, it's been stripped out and we've got all the uh, foam padded bars and everything else like that. And we've also gone for the racing dash. And there we are finished. But what I want to do is I want to just go to menus mod and I want to go to vehicle options and I want to go to vehicle customs and I just want to basically make this thing stupidly fast. Let's let's just try that. Let's go for 20 on that. 20 on that. That would make this thing absolutely rip. Stick a zero on that or a nine, whatever number I end up hitting. And this thing, okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> now we can just go like this and go incredibly fast. Okay, yep, yep, that's that's fast, that's fast. And I can barely steer, and I find that person over, and I crash that car, and it's all been absolutely terrible. 
we need a drag racing map for GTA. If someone knows of a map that is like really, 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 really straight and really, 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 really long as well. I want like a like a 10 mile drag strip or something like that, which also has like markings up for like 400 and, and 1000 meters or something like that. And then just nothing so we can get like a full top speed run on these cars because well, there's just not enough room and road for this sort of stuff to happen, but there is a rather now smashed up GTK drag elegy. So let's just finish this off as we probably always should with a stance build just to finish. Let's go. Okay, and here we are finished with this stance build. I basically just went for some sort of like random tunery parts because I feel like that sort of matches with the style. Gone for like the, the sort of duck lip spoiler. I haven't really changed the interior much at all. And I've kept most things stuck. I've gone for like so, uh, some extended uh, bits on the bottom of the bumper, some slightly extended skirts and stuff like that. And then I've just gone for this really nice shaft of purple, or spinnaker purple. It's one of these nice purples. Really nice flip to it. Looks really nice. And then I've gone for wheels that I think look similar to the wheels that we would have got on the standard Elegy. But I've made them slightly bigger in diameter. I've made them wider. And I've stanced them out. Which actually looks really weird because I've also gone for like the squared out style rear um, arches. Which kind of looks a bit dumb with the cambered wheels. But never mind. We've also gone for a tiny bit of camber on the front as well. Which you probably won't notice with that amount of camber on the rear. But that is all. Stance, dialed in, slammed, and everything else. And I imagine it's just going to glitch through as we drive. That is it. That is all the builds. This has been an incredibly long video. If you have managed to get all the way to the end of this video and you've watched the whole thing, I want you to say Doppler. There you go. Like the name of that cinema right there. Doppler in the comment section below. But also, more importantly, let me know what you think about this mod. Do you think it makes sense? Do you think Rockstar should have done this in the first place and made it so that it was right-hand drive? Or do you think they didn't because it meant they'd have had to recode stuff and they probably didn't want to end up you know, with a buggy game? But actually, generally, I think this is quite smooth for getting out. There we go. Let's, I wonder what happens if we get onto the uh, other side and get in. What happens? We get in. I scoot over. Simple. And I get out on the right side of the car and shut the door. I think it works absolutely flawlessly with right-hand drive. Everything works as it should. Yeah, it's just a shame that Rockstar didn't do that because I think that this suits the car a bit more given the fact that this wouldn't have been made in America and it would have been a fresh new import in Los Santos. But there we go. Let me know what you think of the builds. Maybe lucky, one of those pre-built ones was your favorite. You can let me know. Maybe you got a favorite livery. Uh, all those sort of things, let me know in the comment section below. Or maybe you think you've got your own ideas for some like law friendly style names that go with real brands. Like where we have this one with the GTK, or, or not this one, but where we also have the GTK, which is HKS, and all this sort of stuff. Maybe give your reasonings as to why you think they should be named like that. Just have some fun. Try to think of some nice law friendly names, car brands of things that aren't in here. It's just a nice bit of fun, don't you think? Well, anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But that is going to be it. Thank you so much for watching this incredibly long video. There's definitely going to be a couple more like this very soon as there's some other really, really detailed cars that I've got to check out soon. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the long video. Hope it's been nice. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.